to start us off. Good evening to all. My name is Iris from the C-Focus Programs team. Welcome you to C-Focus 2021's gallery webinar series, where we invite participating exhibitors to present a live digital event to our audiences. The series is also screened on site at C-Focus curated Hyper Horizon at Sanjong Park District Park. So if you are joining us from there, welcome, and we hope you enjoy the exhibition. Our first presentation today is from Tropical Futures Institute, a first time exhibitor at CFOCUS. Tropical Futures Institute was founded in 2015 as an experiment in contemporary culture and is currently located in Cebu, Philippines. They work in tangent with 856G, an open format cultural space that assists them in developing dynamic programs. Tropical Futures Institute produces everything between art exhibitions, residencies, zinfests, loud parties, community shows, workshops, and talks, blending as much as they can across different disciplines and communities to create a diverse cultural programming. They are joined today by artist Christopher Ardenia, who will be giving us a live vlog tour of his studio. I will now hand over the time to Trop Tropical Futures Institute for their live event. Chris, over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Chris. Uh the founder and director of Tropical Futures Institute. Uh, such an honor to be uh, exhibiting Chris's uh, fine work at C Focus. Um, just a little word about Chris and I, we, we started off about over three years ago where we incepted our first show. Uh, and it's been a wild ride from doing community shows and zine fest to Art Dubai to Art Fair Philippines and now with you guys at C Focus. Um, for this evening, we're gonna be doing sort of like a object-based narrative tour with uh, Chris around his studio. And you'll be meeting Chris and some of his uh, studio peers. Um, I'll be answering the Q&A live. So if you have, you, you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, you have a Q&A button. Uh, feel free to drop questions in there. And we'll also allocate a few minutes at the end of the tour for Chris to answer questions directly. And for some of your questions, I will save them for Chris at the end of uh, the tour. So uh, without further ado, Chris, uh, take it away. Okay. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Chris, and welcome to my studio here in Bacolod. It's actually located in Negros Island. It's in the central region of the Philippines, about an hour and a half uh, by plane from Manila. So. Uh, I think let's get started. Anyway, uh, my studio is called Studio Papa because basically Papa means uh, it's a platform, which is normally uh, you can see it in uh, rural houses, and that's where you usually sleep, or sometimes it's where you eat and have conversations with people. And I built this bamboo Papa here in the studio, instead of having a living room. So basically, this studio is named after uh, this space right here. So this is where we hang out usually, like uh, the guys here in the studio, um, especially during this uh, pandemic, where we're normally just here, you know, working. And, um, So we have our resident guardian angel. <laughs> so, you know, uh, this is a statue from uh, Jose Rizal, our national hero. And this is actually 30 years old. And this was from a public space in front of the airport in Dumaguete. And we have him here in the studio. So I'll, I'll take you, I'll show you guys one of the works we're actually uh, working on right now. And this is a uh, seven by 10 painting um, of a rug and it's on tarpaulin and this is actually the rug right here and this is a painting so each uh, square is about 1.5 centimeter and they're all hand painted and it's very tedious so we're just letting it cure um, you have to take the moisture out of the, the paint before we actually crack the paint. And then you can see the image underneath. And then I'll show you guys 
another painting that is a work in progress. And this is partly already cracked, but I'm not yet satisfied with how it looks. And the, the painting is this one originally, this rug. Okay, and then I'll show you our, this is the paint closet, and this is where we keep the paint and the equipment. And uh, as you can see, each color is actually, um, I don't know. <laughs> and then, as you can see, this is what I use for paint, it's called uh, elastomeric paint, and this is uh, typically used here in the Philippines, and I'm sure in other tropical countries, for the exterior of the houses. Okay, and then and this is another painting we're working on, still rug. And we have a painting it's six by five feet. And then I wanted to take you guys to the next uh, workspace in the studio. So here is where we're right now painting the big seven by ten feet. Sam is making one and then Mark is actually also in this painting and is the other painting that's modeled right there and he's doing a new series of, of theoretic paintings that we're working on and then I wanted to show you the first series that we did with a tarpaulin and as you can see, this is actually uh, the election tarp. And I'm sure if this is 2018 or 2016, but we got this off from the streets here in Macaulay right after elections. And you can see a sample. And this is we painted it and we and we cracked it. Okay. So and then I wanted to show you guys the latest uh, paintings that we're also working on right now. Okay. So this is one of the things that I'm actually experimenting right now. It's uh, decoupage. And then what we're doing is instead of just cracking the, the painting, we're actually, if you look at this, this is just to show you a sample. This is the paint. We're actually taking it out, you know? And this is already with the image, if you have the painted image here. And then we crack it and we convert it into this. And then we actually paste it into this. So the idea is the image becomes totally abstracted. And I wanted to create uh, paintings that were not only um, 2D, but actually sculptural paintings. And uh, the next one that we actually just, uh, we're probably gonna start next week is, this is an actual fishnet from the coastal town of Baco. And this is actually uh, a net. And if, as you can see, it has repairs. It was actually from a crab, no? From crabs that wanted to get away. So what I'm doing right now is basically to paint directly on um, objects and like on surfaces and then leave it cracked. So in a way, it's kind of like when you look at the marble sculptures of Rome. And then if you look at, they were not actually white, they were, they were actually painted. And so I kind of wanted to challenge that notion of permanence in painting. No? And 
living in the tropics, it's all about, um, it's very humid and the idea of memory. And I wanted to kind of make that as part of a formal element in painting. No? So in a lot of ways, if you see this, um, maybe you don't see the paint anymore, but you just see the material, but then it's still considered a painting. No? So that's kind of like the next step where I want to go. And then I wanted to take you guys to, uh, since about a year and a half ago, I started doing uh, painting in public spaces, no? because um, I actually also started, when I started doing uh, art, I also started doing uh, stencil graffiti, and I love doing street art. And um, what we did is we actually uh, started doing uh, tarp, the ones that were billboards, painting it. But I also wanted to expand that idea of painting in public space. So I wanted to show you guys one of the samples that we actually did. This is uh, Diki, you know, she is from Bago. And I actually collaborated with Jeremiah. She is, uh, Jeremiah is a fashion designer from Bago. And this project is also produced by uh, Ramus. Ramus is also a, a jewelry designer. And this is actually one of her, one of his uh, designs. And he's into beading. And as you can see, um, the tarp is actually painted and then made into a swimsuit. So I wanted to expand that notion of uh, painting in public space, not only in terms of really putting work on the street, but also in terms of like what people wear and bringing it to, to that. No? And this is something that I'm actually working with Ramos right now. So it's a hoodie and we're starting to uh, do bead work. It's still a work in progress. And that's kind of like what we're doing right now. So um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. This is more or less um, the studio. So thank you. Yeah, Chris. Uh, uh, we can yeah. probably uh, we can do a, a little just conversation between yourself and myself regarding okay. the, the, the title of the show. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, you know, practicing art at the periphery. Uh, okay. Most, you know, most of your, your professional career took place in Spain, in Madrid. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, what brought you back from Madrid to the Philippines? Okay. Um, I think it's a very complex question, huh? but in terms of art, um, I think I was, in a way, a little bit uh, bored. And when it comes to, um, like, you know, in, in Spain, there was so much of that conceptual art, very formal. I found it very academic. And it wasn't exciting, and I thought it wasn't innovative. And so I also wanted to come back to the Philippines and I wanted to kind of see, uh, I don't know, a lot of my friends in Spain actually went to either London or Paris or New York. And I wanted to come back here, you know? Like at first I wanted to stay in Manila for a little bit, but then I realized, you know, I, I wanted to really come back here as far as possible. And it, it's, okay, I think the word is freedom. Like the beautiful thing about being here, you know, is the fact that you're, I feel free to do what I want and to actually fail, you know? And also to meet people like Ramos, Mickey, or like the people that surround me here, I think it's very inspiring. And the, one of the things that is important to me, because when you think of the periphery, it's more of a geopolitical question and if you think about art, there's no such a thing as a periphery because wherever you are, you can make art and you can produce art. And a lot of times I always ask, no? like, why are you here? I'm like, it's exciting to be here. Um, I wake up 
every day and I want to work, I, you know, like sometimes like I'm with Ramus in Bago, which is like 30 minutes from um, where I am in Baholid and things just happen, no? like ideas and talking to these guys right here. And it's not necessarily being with artists. It's just like having conversations, looking, observing. And then I think it's that excitement and that's something that actually draws me here. And it's something that makes me very happy being an artist here. Yeah, just, I mean, just for context to the audience, uh, Bacola yeah. is, uh, it's, I would say like a secondary city within the Philippines. It's uh, famous for sugar, uh, sugar production, uh, Moscovado, um, and used to be uh, historically one of like supplied most of the world's sugar at um, back in the 60s and 70s. Um, and to get to Bacolod, uh, you can you have to fly through Manila basically. Um, so it's sort of like it's pretty much like yeah, flying to Manila and you have to take a plane down to Bacolod. So it's quite it's quite uh, far away from from being at like a capital or uh, um, like a major city. Uh, but I guess like it, sort of digging uh, a little bit for like deeper is like beyond the the, the situational or the environmental um, space you're in, like it like it was there also like a a core reason for returning to the, the Philippines specifically in terms of relationality to your yeah. practice in terms of maybe subject matter or or thematic um, yeah. uh, qualities and so on? Um, I don't think it's about a, any thematic concern. I think it's also because, um, you know, when I was, I, I, I spent my teenage years in Germany, Luxembourg, and a lot of my mentors actually taught me that, you know, at an early age, like being exposed to uh, philosophy, Western philosophy. And it, it's kind of taught me that culture is never better or worse in one place or another. And it's what you do with it. And it's how you think about it and you contextualize it. Man. And so I've never felt like I was either in a periphery or coming from where I come from. Like I was raised here in the island, in Negros Island. And I never thought it was any better or worse than being in Berlin or being in Madrid or, I mean, I did my university in San Francisco. No, I, I think it depends on how you look at things and how you see things and how you, <laughs> and that's important for me. And that's also really why I'm here. Okay. Oh, Chris, we have a question yeah. from, uh, from Purin. Uh, uh, they ask, what are your thoughts on a studio model where you hire many assistants to realize the work for you? What are the pros and cons compared to working on the pieces yourself? Okay. Um, I think it's a very interesting question because, for example, with I'll, I'll say within the Philippine context and especially within the, the idea or the notion of what painting should be. You know? Like here in the Philippines, the notion of painting is still very much related to, I'm an artist, I paint by myself, you know? Like an easel painter, you know? I think you have to broaden that idea. And I think um, in terms of a studio model, um, you grow with it. And it depends on the needs that you have at the moment that you're making art, you know? And one of the things I love about, for example, us here, you guys, um, we actually work together, you know, like I value their opinion and sometimes, you know, like we actually like for paintings, you know, like a lot of the detail, like the, the mixing of the color, like their input, I really take it into consideration because they also have to know what I'm doing and at the same time I have to kind of, you grow with them, you know, you grow with the guys you work with. And I mean, like, I would say your practice, your studio practice is relatively new. Uh, it's only really manifested in the last, uh, I would uh, say, yeah. year and a half, really, yes. to, be, to yes. be clear on that. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, just because it seemed like some of the projects or the manifestation of your, your work is also 
taking form in the works of the public paintings or more uh, installation and other works that do require assistance. And uh, especially for your recent uh, installation piece at Mo Space, where it was a massive, uh, a gigantic painting, really. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Oh, OK. I get what you mean. Um, I'm actually used to doing more ephemeral work. And the paintings that I do are basically the same. It's, as you can see, you know, I'm mm -hmm. actually making it part of the formal context of my own work, no? Yeah. Like, but in terms of working specifically in painting, but that's not the only thing I do in terms of the medium, no? I think, yeah. you know, I don't want to be defined by one medium, but at the same time, coming back to the Philippines, there is a conscious effort in my part to actually work within the context of painting itself, you know? Yeah. And yeah, but I'm definitely used to more doing work on the streets, more ephemeral mm -hmm. work, more performances. Yeah. The other, the other thing I wanted to ask you for the audience is, uh, you know, one of the big things we connected over is the idea of the tropics, and <laughs> there is definitely a resurgence. Um, you know, both, uh, you know, we see it parallel economically, demographically, and across the tropics in general, and especially in Southeast Asia. Um, for me, having lived in Southeast Asia for most of my life, I, I definitely see an immense amount of activity in, in all the capitals, cultural or economic. So what do you think it's important that we use labels like tropical or just even the notion of contributing to this concept of a movement? Okay. Um, I don't believe in the idea of a movement. I think, you know, I think I kind of want to define it in that term because it's much easier for me to work having a guideline. But it's also putting the context within where I work, no? Like, I think, for example, for me, I work pretty much uh, within where I am, like in Negros Island, which is obviously uh, we're in the topic specifically in the Philippines. And it's not the same as being in Manila, no? And that, that alone is different. But at the same time, I think, it, I think I should just say it's a working model. But at the same time, the notion of the is so very global. No? It's encompassing and it's something that people can relate to and can interject. It's like a very permeable, you know? And then we have like, um, in terms of your personal experience, how you connect to that, you know? But in terms of a working model and like the series and the things, because I also like to write no? uh, about my own practice and the things that I do, no? I think it's more about putting it into that context and then defining it for myself. We have another question for the audience. Uh, Alexei asks, how has living in Bacolod influenced your work compared to being in a more cosmopolitan city like Madrid? Okay, um, definitely has influence because if you look at um, the standard work that I do, um, it's very much rooted to this place, but it's also, I have to say, very global, no? Um, I'm not only from here. I think consciously or unconsciously, the kind of works that I do also has to speak in more universal terms, no? And for example, as you can see with the, the paintings, so, um, I don't expect you to necessarily understand or grasp the concept I'm working with, but you can actually participate in it. Like, um, I don't want to be discursive. Of course it's there, but I want the audience to participate and impose their own perception of the work. I think it's important because if you think about it, like this is one of the things I love about being back home. No? Um, there's such a big importance to the narrative, the storytelling. And I also want to inject it as really a big part of the formal uh, element of art making. No? Mm -hmm. So for me, yes, uh, being here has definitely influenced my work. But at the same time, when I'm working here, I'm also in Madrid because it's part of me, it's also where I grew up, no? And so I'm always kind of like in both places at the same time. So I think the good thing is, I feel that it speaks of 
a way uh, global perspective, but without perhaps trying to part, no? It's just something inherent that comes out in the work. I mean, one thing, an observation from me as a third person from your work is your early, your body of work in Madrid really centered around more conceptual, institutional, and performative work. While your work in the Philippines, I would say like a lot of artists work, uh, for better or for worse, is really driven by the conditions in which uh, artists have to practice, where there's not a, a large amount of institutional funding um, or even private foundational funding. So a lot of artists have to abide and participate by the market conditions um, of their work um, in the Philippines. Yeah, but you know, I think it's interesting because for example, I live where I am, you know? And there is obviously the, the, the you know, when the, if you know Bacala, there's an amazing artistic community. But at the same time, I think on a personal level, I choose to practice in some way, a bit of uh, recluse, no? But it's a choice in my part. But at the same time, I love doing paintings in public spaces. Like, um, I don't know, I think it's because they started, you don't, to produce art, to make art, to show art, you don't necessarily need a white cube. You don't necessarily need a gallery. You don't need an institution necessarily. You can, you can I, I think that's one of the great things about being here. You know, like in Spain, obviously they have the resources, they have the institutions, no? But there is, it's a matter of how you see things. Like, I love being here because you can make art, you can collaborate with people. That you, otherwise, sometimes in Madrid, it will take you permits, you know, so many paperwork. Like, even like grants, like here, there are no grants. So it's just like here, I collaborate with graduates, or I do stuff, you know, mm -hmm. with you know. Mm -hmm. So it, I think that speaks to freedom, no? Whether you fail or you, I don't know. Like, I mm -hmm. think it makes it more exciting. So, mm -hmm. really, that's one of the things I love being here. You know? Got it. You need the cube probably at a certain point in a certain context. But when I came here, um, I also had to, in a way, start all over again. No? And like Instagram, social media was actually very useful for me. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a platform which to, in a way, showcase work. No. Otherwise, if you do something in a town somewhere, otherwise it's not yet to see, you know? So, I don't know. I don't think it's better or worse here. I just think it's a different context. Got it. Uh, we're almost, I guess, you know, we have like a minute and a half of time left. Uh, do you have any closing notes or, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's been, it's, yeah, go ahead. If you, we still have a minute left. But um, thank you for coming to the studio and thank you to Scene Focus for having us, no? like me, and then the Talking Guys, uh, Futures Institute team. And uh, I don't know, thank you for coming, guys. Yeah, thanks, Scene Focus. Uh, thank you to the team. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, adios, or umping, <laughs> as we say. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Chris and Chris, for that wonderful tour. So that concludes the presentation from Tropical Futures Institute. As we are already at 7pm, we can proceed with the next presentation of the evening from Nova Contemporary.